pond specialist. And we've uh, put up a couple of videos before about pond dyes. And here's another one with a little more information. Uh, yes and no questions and answers. So we're talking about pond dye. This particular brand is uh, one quart does a entire acre. So if you had a quarter acre pond, you only use a quarter to a half of this. I'll explain why you would want to use uh, with one acre, you use one to two of these. So I'll try and explain that as well. Why you'd want to use extra. So pond dye is just that. It's a dye that you add to the pond to change its color. Uh, if you're tired of the green pea soup look, uh, that'll help. It'll change the color and that's going to help get that green pea soup stuff to go away because you're blocking the sunlight out and stopping the photosynthesis from the sun that makes the green grow. So that's one of the reasons we want to use pond dye, help to uh, slow down the growth rate of algae and or weeds. And depending on how deep or how thick of uh, application you use, would reach, would block out more sunlight. One question is, and maybe I'm goofing it up, but hey, that's the way I am. You know, does it kill algae and weeds? I say yes and no. It, it's not a chemical, so you don't apply it and then the weed or algaes die. They basically, you're like suffocating them, so they can't get one of the materials, one of the essentials that they need to live. So you're kind of suffocating them. You're not directly killing them. So it's kind of a yes to no question. But from the full concentrate, you could dump it on weeds. Uh, you could dump it on a plant. And that concentrate would definitely block out the sunlight from getting in and keeping that plant alive and it would die. So there's a yes answer for you. Good one is, does it stain? Absolutely. Uh, yes and no. Again, if we're just pouring it into the water, once it hits the water and starts to disperse, it really is not going to stick on you. You know, at first when I tried this, uh, you know, the pond turned blue, I put too much in, it got super blue, and I'm thinking, man, the geese are going to come, they're going to land, and they're going to leave with a blue bottom. But that doesn't happen. Once the, once the concentrate filters throughout the water, you're good to go. Go swimming, you don't turn blue, and once it's dispersed in the water, you're safe. Uh, it's not going to stain the rocks when the water's splashing up against them. Uh, you know, maybe a smaller pond, uh, waterfall, there may be some staining, so I would add it just a little bit at a time to where the, the fast moving water is and not just dump it on the rocks because it may stain that. Uh, another and the other answer, yes, it does stain. It's a concentrate. So I've goofed up myself walking around the pond, a pair of shorts, no gloves, and tripped over my sandals and it splashed in the jug and it came all over me. And it will live on you for, or stay on you for a few days unless you get the really scrubbing and you can get it off. You know, your clothes, it dissolves in water, so wash them separately in uh, the washer without anything else or it could turn blue or whatever color of pond dye you're using. That takes care of the staining I believe. Another question is, is it safe for fish, wildlife, or whoever's drinking out of the pond? Um, you know the fish, they haven't turned blue. Uh, you've seen koi, our koi after I don't know how many years now, I've gotten pictures, some videos of them. They still got their wonderful colors. Uh, we pulled out a uh, hybrid striped bass a little while ago, and he's silver, so it doesn't stain them. Uh, it doesn't hurt them. Our boys, the our two dogs, have been one likes to wade out into the pond. He doesn't get stained, and they've been drinking out of the pond every time we come over to the pond. So there's no problem with you know they don't have no weird side effects or anything. It's just it's essentially a dye like you would color uh, food coloring and we're just doing it to the pond. Okay, on with uh, how, how do we use, say I order the pond dye, I get a quart for my 
acre pond, half acre, quarter acre pond. And let's, uh, I guess instead of confusing you, let's just use a one acre pond. And the recommended dosage is one quart per acre. Up to two quarts if you would like. What that means is, and what I've discovered throughout my working on or testing out and using these different dyes, as springtime comes, we're going to want to get the color on that water, say, around 55 degrees. And it's all kind of a, you got to watch for the rain, how much water is running out of your pond due to the rain, spring, uh, ice melt, snow melt. You don't want to put it in, just go right out. So keep an eye on that, you know, balance your differences so that you're not just putting it in and it's going out. Uh, with the pond dye, we have the three different colors. This style pond dye, this type pond dye, uh, will color the water four to six feet deep. So that's a lot of water that you're covering. And, you know, if some runoff is going to happen, that's great. Okay, back to the story. Back to the usage. So in the spring, uh, we're still 55 degrees, 60. We start hitting 60 degrees in the water. Uh, the water's warming up, and the, the, that's when the plants and algae are going to start wanting to grow. And if that starts to happen, you may want to jump up or bump up to one and a half quarts or two quarts for that one acre pond. Uh, that will darken it up more so that we get less penetration of light sunlight into the pond. Then actually how to apply the pond dye. As I take that quart bottle, shake it up, we'll, uh, I walk around the perimeter of the pond and if I'm going to use the whole quart, just dump a little splash in, you know, every 50 or 100 feet. And just keep going around the pond, put some uh, drops, not drops, but you know, glug glug out of the quart. And you can walk away. 24 to 48 hours, it will, the pond will be colored. Just because of the, the way the water movement happens in the pond, it'll mix in. And if you're a little impatient, uh, kind of like me, I want to see it happen quicker, I'll take a shovel or the paddle from a boat and go out there and just swish around the water where the dye is thick at. Help get it to start moving quicker. And as for color, uh, and why you would get different colors, uh, say with nature's blue. It's going to be a blue, a dark blue that most people see, you see in most ponds. It shows both our ponds, the little pond and the big pond, where we have blue in both. And this is blue, the little pond, and the front one was like a light blue, uh, kind of weird looking, maybe a... Bahamas, you know, out on the beach, the ocean, a bright light blue. The reason that is, is because of the, what particles that might be floating in your water. We have turbid water, so we have a lot of clay particles that the koi keep stirring up, the bluegill stir up when they build their nests, and those are floating through the water, and the dye will attach onto that, onto those particles. It could be even nutrients that they're uh, attaching to, and that's going to change the color. But if your water's nice and clear, you're going to get a darker, deeper, rich color. That would be the reason for a different color when you put it in your pond. So that's it on pond dye. I hope I covered all the questions, answers, uh, how to use it, and have fun. Have any questions on how to use it or how much to put in, we'll gladly size up your pond if we can find it on Google Maps. We'll get the size and let you know your dosage rate. So, have fun. See you next time.